Okay, I like to start with the kick and the bass because in most types of electronic music, it's the most important aspect. The low end is where all the energy is, especially in techno. And this, so this is the bit you've got to get right. So that's why I will start with the kick and then the bass. And once you've got kick and bass just working together and giving you that absolute banging vibe that you're pretty sure will work on the dance floor, that's when you can then move on to other aspects such as melody and filler effects and, and all the kind of rest of it. So that's how I operate. So that's the way I'll be teaching you. Now, you can't really go wrong with a 909 kick in techno. And you can find plenty of 909 and 808 samples on the internet for free. There's lots of people got them available. And I did try a 909 kick when I made this track first time round. But I ended up going with something a little bit dirtier. I wanted something a little bit different. So I just went on to Loop Cloud, or you can go to any sample service, of course. But Loop Cloud, I find really, really useful. I'm not associated with these guys. There's no commission involved. I'm just telling you that with Loop Cloud, you can select your genre. Let's say click genre and techno. Or you can go and select kick drum under instruments, for example. And then you can filter all your results to techno kick drums and then you can audition them live whilst your track is playing that is what i absolutely love about this system here and then you can just buy the individual hit which is very very cheap rather than having to buy the whole pack so and it's brilliant you can just download it and chuck it straight into your project it's absolutely brilliant so i just chose a sample and that sample will be in your downloadable work files which you should have got inside your pack your when you unzip the whole package you get from us inside will be a folder called work files so you just go to file browser on the right hand side and just navigate to wherever that work files folder is and choose techno kick drum mine is on the desktop and i'm just going to put it up above the effects channels and i'm going to color it yellow all my drums will be yellow. And so what we've got here is a techno kick drum on beat one, measure one, in our project. I'm just zooming in by clicking and dragging downwards and upwards in the top timeline. You can use G and H as well. I will, I will mention the odd thing here and there. This is not for strict beginners, this course, but I will try and explain what I'm doing as much as I can. And then we have our kick drum. So what we need to do is just copy this over, of course, on each beat. You can also see that I like to start with a two bar loop and really get something happening, maybe add about 10 or so different instruments, get them all working together. And then I like to go and start making the arrangement. That's how I do it. So just copy by holding down Alt or Option if you're on a Mac. And you can highlight more and copy more if you wish. So this is our kick drum. So the first thing we need to do is turn it down because this is the very first sound we've brought into the project. And we're going to mix everything to this. And because we're already on maximum volume, it's very important for us to turn this down. So we're just going to come over here drag downwards bring this right down we want the meter to be peaking at around minus 12. the reason for this is that when we start bringing in all the other instruments there's going to be a, probably another 20 or 30 or so instruments and they're all going to sum together so that's why we need to bring bring it down otherwise we're going to get clipping on the main output which is here so we're on minus six at the moment I'll bring it down to about minus 10, roughly speaking. Um, I do like to use sampler tracks. I haven't put this techno kick into a sampler track because I know that I'm definitely going to use this kick. But when I'm messing around and trying to get ideas, and like, for example, the first time I made this track, I wasn't sure what kick I was going to use. And this is the same for hi-hats and everything like that. I always right-click on the sample. Let's say you're over here. So I always right-click create sampler track and we will be doing this later on that way you can easily just swap out the sound for another sound if it's not quite working right for you 
but I'm not going to do that on the on the techno kick because I know this is the one I'm going to use. Now, as you can hear, this is not particularly punchy, and don't worry because I'm going to be layering this up with a higher kick or more punchy kick rather, with a lot more top end. So this is just forming the lower end of the kick. But before we bring in that second kick as a layer, let's see what we can do with this one. I normally like to give it a little bit of snap on the compressor. So what we do is we let the transient through. Put the ratio up a little bit. Let the transient through by putting the attack up to 20 milliseconds, roughly speaking. Bring the release right down. And let's not overdo it with the threshold. But let's just see what's happening. Quite a bit of reduction there. Uh, what we're doing here is when you compress something, you're normally leveling out the dynamics. So the difference between the loudest sound and the lowest sound, which is called the dynamic range. We are flattening that out so there's less distance between the lowest and the highest sound. But you can also use compression in a more creative way. And that's what we're doing here. We're trying to get a bit of a snappier feel. And what we do is we let the transient through. Just make this a bit bigger. So let's say this first part here is the 20 seconds. We let that through and then we compress the rest, which means we reduce the volume of the rest. So it would be something like this, for example, which, ma which makes the sample more snappier because the first bit is louder. Just gonna undo that, That's just for demonstration purposes. So let's have a listen. And what I find is, unless you do a mix, you tend to lose the low end. So we'll put the mix up to 50%. So we're only affecting half the sample with, with, the, with the effect. That's before, after. That is definitely snappier than it was before. And what I also like to try and do is I normally use a, a saturation plugin like Magneto. It will be under the distortion. Magneto and Quadrifies are excellent. But if you haven't got those, if you're using a lesser version of Cubase, you can try Datube or Distortion. So with Quadrifies, you can, I tend to use tape saturation. I sometimes use a tiny bit of distortion, but you have got to be really, really subtle with it. And here it really starts to mess it up. But you've got a mix control at the top, an overall mix control that is, and you've got mix controls on the individual bands as well. These bands here, one, two, three, four, relate to the bands here, one, two, three, four. So you've got your real low end, low mids, high mids, and highs, and you can move these bands as long as you just click on the line exactly. You can affect those bands as you wish with these different effects. Always do a before and after. Check what you're doing. Yeah, and always level out the volume as well. So it adds a little bit of saturation and what we'll do as well is Magneto. Uh, with Magneto, you just come here, switch on the saturation. I find normally 50 to 60 percent is about right. Anything more than that, it just starts getting nasty. And you can adjust the frequency range here with these two buttons here low dial and high dial. And it always adds volume. Always, 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 always level out your volume. Otherwise, when you put the plug-in in, it always tends to be a bit louder and humans get confused. They think louder is better and it's not always the case. If you level off the volumes, so when you bypass the plug-in, it's the same volume, you can then actually hear or concentrate on what the plug-in is doing. 
as opposed to going, oh, that's louder, it's better. If you bring the frequency right down, it really starts to distort sub, which we don't want. We want to warm the sub, but we don't want to distort it. And always, always, always do bypass. I I quite often put a plug in on, think it's good, do the bypass, decide that it's not really doing anything that's benefiting the sound, and then I take the plug in off. Often I do that. But obviously, if it works, you keep it on. So there's just one final thing I want to do here. I know we are adding a layer in the next lesson, an additional sample, kick sample, which is a much higher snap, much higher frequency on it. But I'm still going to give this one a little bit as well. Just sweep around until you get something nice. This is all sort of horrible and boxy here. And we'll add that in. So bypass, again, we'll bypass what we've done. Always, always, always bypass. Check what you're doing before, after. Just brings out a tiny bit of that snap. Another way to add snap without doing the compressor trick, which I showed you before, is you can add an envelope shaper that will be under dynamics. I'm not sure if this is in elements or not, probably not, but it's in artist on pro. I might be wrong about that. And um, all we're going to do is just boost the attack here. Again, it's making it louder, so you would need to balance it out and bypass. It's a bit too much. It's a tiny bit more snappy. I'm going to keep it off until we add the second layer in, which is in the next lesson. Well, one final thing I want to show you. Um, it don't, it's not actually necessary in this case. You can see the end of this sample is completely free of volume, but it's still good practice whenever you bring in a sample like this is to highlight them all and just bring the volume envelope across so you get a fade out. That way, if you do have a little click on the end, if you are hearing a click, this is what will solve it. So you've now got definitely no chance of any clicks on the end of the sample. Okay guys, we'll see you in the next lesson where we'll layer up this kick with a higher frequency kick and we'll add plenty more snap to this, make it sound more energetic and more like a techno kick. See you then. Bye-bye.